So now let's talk about Bayesian analysis. And let's look at it in the context of a guy you're seeing in the emergency department who has a swollen, red, hot ankle. And uh, one of the nurses drew a uh, CBC and you got the white count back and it was 14. So now you're asking yourself, is this ankle uh, an infected ankle and do I have to tap it and start them on antibiotics? Given this white count of 14, you might say, heck yeah, that's, that's elevated, so this is an infected ankle. But not so fast. Let me give you some history first. So say the patient twisted his ankle while he was stepping off the curb, and he was totally fine beforehand, and this all happened right immediately after that. And so it sounds like he sprained his ankle. In fact, it, it's pretty classic for that. So what does this 14 mean? Does it mean that it's infected? Probably not. Let me give you a different scenario. So now this patient didn't have any trauma. It just It's been gradually happening over a week. And now that you have this white count of 14, you're thinking, hey, they may have an infection. It's more likely. Now, how is it that this same number is being interpreted differently? Well, to understand that, we have to go back to our Bayesian analysis. And we have to understand two things, pretest probability and post-test probability. So the pretest probability is how likely you think something is before you get any tests. So it's pre before a test. So in this case where the guy twisted his ankle, how likely do we think that it's infected? Uh, not very likely. We'd probably have very low pretest probability. Now in this case where the patient had no trauma and it gradually got worse over a week, uh, our pretest probability might be medium or even high. So how does a test help you uh, get to the post-test probability? So the pretest probability times the effect of the test will give you the post-test probability. So it is very important that you know what your pretest probability is. You have to have a, an instinct or or an understanding of how likely this is before you order a test because you interpret a test based on the pretest probability. Why is that? Because no test is perfect. A white count of 14 does not mean that somebody is infected. A positive D-dimer does not automatically mean that it's a PE. So how do you figure out what this pretest probability is? You might find it in the literature. Like there might be saying that something that says 17% of all patients who present with the worst headache of their life have a subarachnoid bleed. So if someone comes in with the worst headache, you say, huh, my pretest probability is 70, 17%. Or maybe you find another one that said of patients who come in with syncope, 25% uh, of them have a cardiac cause. So if someone comes in, you might say, okay, uh, they came in with syncope, uh, my pretest probability for cardiac cause is 25%. Maybe there's no literature support, so you've got to go with your gut feeling or gestalt, where you might say, I've seen uh, hundreds of uh, women presenting with this kind of belly pain, and I, my gut feeling is saying that this is about 15% chance of it being an ectopic. So work on developing uh, your intuition on what is the pretest probability. So this becomes important now when we're looking at thresholds uh, of our probability. So we can talk about a discard threshold. And we'll say any probability that's below that number, any pretest probability, we're just going to say that the person doesn't have that disease. So let's say that we set it, let's say we're talking about belly pain and um, gastritis. Okay, and so let's say we set that at 10%. And so what that means is if my pretest probability of that gastritis is in this area, I'm just going to say, you know what? It's not gastritis. I'm comfortable saying that. If we're on this side, then I don't know. But let's pick a scarier diagnosis, maybe like triple A. Okay, now we would say that Am I comfortable with being 10% uh, 
sure uh, uh, unsure that that's what it is. Like I'm 90% sure it's not a triple A, but 10% I'm not so sure. No way. That diagnosis is pretty darn scary. I want to be much, 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 much more certain. So maybe I set that level at 1%. I want to be 99% sure that this is a, a AAA before I rule it out. Now, you will never be 100% sure that it isn't or that it is something. So you're never going to reach 0% and you're never going to reach 100%. But you could get pretty darn close to that. So now, for this, we're saying that a person who comes in with belly pain, if we have 9%, our pretest probability is 9%, we're going to say, you know what, it's not GERD. But if it's 9%, we're not willing to say that it's not a AAA. Now, similarly, we have an accept threshold. And what this means is any pretest probability that is above that, we're going to say it is that disease. And so let's take uh, GERD again. And so say we set that at 75% for the accept threshold for GERD. Saying that, you know what, um... I don't care if it's if it's GERD. The, the treatment is just a bunch of antacids and stop eating spicy foods. So if I'm uh, 70 or 80 percent sure about this being GERD, I'm going to start treatment and I'm going to call it GERD. Okay, now but for AAA, you might not be willing to do that. You might say, you know, the, tr the treatment for that is surgical and it's um, it involves going to the OR and there's a lot of risk in that. So I want to be much more certain for AAA. So I'm going to set that at 90. So I have to be 90% um, sure that it is AAA before I'm willing to, uh, to accept it. If I'm 95, 96, 97, I'm going to accept it. Uh, and now for GERD, uh, I have to be 75% more before I'm willing to accept this diagnosis, before I'm willing to rule it in. So for the GERD case, we have a 10%. Um, if it's less than 10%, we're ruling it out, and if it's more than 75%, we're ruling it in. Now, what if it's in the middle? What if it's 60 or 50%? This is the intermediate zone, or the, I don't know what it is. I'm not sure if it's GERD or not. I need to do some sort of test in order to know. Now, for AAA, our indeterminate zone, or I'm not really sure zone, is much higher. It goes from 1% all the way to 90% here. And so look at our testing zone is here. And so what does this mean? If you are in the rule out zone, there's no need to get a test because you've already, you're pretty comfortable saying it's not that disease. And if you're in the rule in area, there's no need to get a test because you are already pretty comfortable saying that's what it is. The only time you want to get a test is when you're in this indeterminate zone. That's when you get a test. And so, that's why it's important to know what your pretest probability is. Okay, that's enough for pretest probability and Bayesian analysis for now.